Well, thank you for tuning in for that. So that's that's our prayer promotion and Daniel Fast promotion. And so please join us. Uh, I, I'm right along with Stephanie and the prayer team. Please join us this week. Um, do something different this week. I believe that this I believe that this week and the way we're doing the Daniel Fast this year will play right along with the messages so that we can take our time uh, and move through what we need to move through to make long term changes in our lives where we're not just making a change um, because it's January and we want to change a habit. Uh, we want and then, you know, by March, we don't even know what we even wrote down or what we thought we would change. So uh, thank you again for tuning in and joining us. I pray that you would join us with in, in, in the fast this uh, week. Remember, it's 21 days in all, seven days in January, seven days in February, and seven days in March. And again, you should have received an email with all of that information in it. And there will be a different prayer focus for each month. So there's a breakdown of the prayer that we would like for you to be praying for the focus for each day of that month. And so, again, if you did not receive, you know, the instructions, please let us know. We'll make sure that you get that. You should have received that. It, it would say from Stephanie Stapleton, but it's from GTM. She's um, it's a GTM email address, but it's her name. If you don't recognize that name, Stephanie, you should have received an email from Stephanie. So again, if you're joining us uh, again for the first time, I want to welcome you for to this series, to part three. This is us. This is who we are. This is who God's created us to be. And um, today we're going to get more into who he actually created us to be, not just who we are and who we're trying to become, but who he created us to be so that we can become that single person or become that person. And it's a process. That's really um, the whole thing. In this series, we've talked about, you know, the fact that uh, we make resolutions and set goals um, that that are really disconnected from the habits that we already have. And that's, that's part of the big problem. We have set, we will set a goal that we don't have the habits to sustain. We'll set a goal or we'll make a resolution and we haven't practiced any kind of habits whatsoever to help us to be able to do what we're saying we want to do that we're resolving to do. And so this series is all about, you know, generating and creating and, and maintaining habits that will sustain and support the kind of person that you want to be. You must connect what you desire to do, uh, you know, or what you want to change to a process. And that process is actually habits where you're doing something over and over and over and over again. The last couple of weeks, we've talked about a couple of things that supports habits where we talk about a system, you know, something that you will do, you know, 1% at a time. The first week I gave you some examples uh, of, of a, a biking team that made changes just 1% a day over a period of time. They had never, they hadn't won a gold medal in the Olympics, you know, for decades. And then after five years of just making changes, one percent a day they held the records for the the most uh olympic gold medals for the next five six years and then went on to win other ones after that so uh it, it's scientifically proven if you will make small changes every single day you just get a little bit better get a little bit better and do a little bit more in line with what you're trying to do you will find that you're, you're generating and creating habits that now they're on autopilot and you don't have to think about it. When something's on autopilot, you know, you don't, you don't have to think with your mind consciously. Your brain is already designed by God to even trigger things inside of your body to do things that you don't have time to think about doing. And so this series brings attention to that kind of transformation where we want to focus on the habits, where we want to focus on the things that that are sustainable in changing us into the image of Christ. So today we're focusing on um, one day at a time. That's the title for today. One day at a time. And it's so important that we realize, you know, um, we need to make changes, but we need to not think to get too far ahead of ourselves and and that's what typically that's what we do is we'll set a goal and let's say I, I want to lose you know 30 pounds and then 
we focus on those 30 pounds. Well, something happens in your brain when you first focus on that. When you focus on, you you know, seeing yourself losing 30 pounds, then your brain, you, you really do get, you know, these um, the, the dwarfins in your head where you are, you, you actually feel better. You, you feel almost like you started already. You haven't done anything. You, and that's what, that's, that's that, you know, that image, that's that inspiration that gives you the, you know, the, force and the energy to go buy whatever you need to buy. You're going to go do, you know, whether it's some equipment to exercise on or whatever it is, you, you're all geared up to go because you're, you're focusing on what you want to be. And then when you get all this stuff, you realize that I got to do something. I, there's something I need to do. And now you're starting to focus on the process and the process is not fun. The process is you know, the process is difficult. The pro- and we need to recognize that. We, we want to do things that are easy and we think it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. The process is hard. And so don't, don't, don't expect things to change overnight. You got to go through the process. And it's your daily schedule. It's what you put on your schedule. If you don't put it on your schedule, it probably won't happen. We, if it does, it may happen for a few days because you remember, but your brain doesn't work like that. You need to put it on your schedule. What's on your schedule determines what you will actually change. What's on your schedule determines what you will actually improve in if you put it on your schedule. So that's one of the things that I'm doing this year is putting things on my schedule that I want to change. You know, if you want to change some behavior, say you've been smoking for 20 years and and now you realize that really if, if I want to live and if I want to be around for my children, my grandchildren, and I want some better health, then I need to focus on changing my life. So one of the things that we start doing typically is we start focusing on how to stop smoking, which, which means our focus is really still on the cigarettes. Well, you, you want to see what you need to see is your new self without cigarettes. You want to see your new, what kind of person, what does a person do who does not smoke? And that's, those are the behaviors you want to start, you know, writing down so that you can follow. And that's, that's the kind of stuff we're going to talk about today. And I want to share, you know, a very powerful scripture with you um, that helps us with this, but you've got to connect with what you want to change to a process that you can put into a daily practice that becomes a daily habit. And so I have a question for you to get started with this. And that's this. Do you ever wonder why it's, it is so easy to repeat bad habits? Seems like it's just, it's, you know, if you got a bad habit, it's easy to repeat a bad habit. And it's so hard to create and maintain good habits. Why is that? You know, and from where I come from, you know, a lot of people would tell me, well, it's just the devil. You know, (laughs) how many of you've heard that one before? You know, it's the devil. The devil's there, you know, for every bad habit, the devil's there leading me into that. And that's why we pray, Lord, don't lead me into evil. Well, God's not leading you into evil anyway. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's (laughs) keeping you from evil, but bad habits is like, Bad habits is like swimming downstream. Everything is already flowing in that direction, and you don't even have to swim or stroke. You're going to flow. You're going to go downstream because you're moving with the tide. You're moving with everything else that's moving in that direction. There's no effort. Well, changing and creating good habits, it, it's like swimming upstream. It's almost impossible. Um, and you want. And so my question to you is: is why? Why is that so hard? Why is that? Um, so impossible, you know, what are, um, what are some of the things that, you know, think, think about this yourself. What are some things that you have tried to change that, uh, you know, whether it's a habit or just a behavior that you want to change and what, what was your success rate with that? You know, list some things that may not be too embarrassing. If you would, what are some habits that you have that you've tried to change? What are some of those habits? Um, I'll, I'll share one. And if you want to share uh, some of those, then please do. And I'll, I'll watch and, and, you know, reference those of you who, who are actually engaged with me this morning. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and ask the questions and we'll try to answer your questions this morning. But 
Go ahead and list some so we can see. I'll, I'll talk about one of one of mine. Uh, I've been successful for a while, um, you know, at, at some of the things that I've done. And one of my bad habits is procrastination. It's so easy for me to procrastinate. Um, it's so easy for me to um, put things off and then wait till the last minute. And it seems like when when it's down at the you know the 11th hour seems like i get enough energy now to just go really 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 fast and really hard and get it done uh but that's not the way we should do it and i kind of talked about that last week you know not so fast because we do everything fast but and you don't when you create a habit of doing everything fast everything's not going to work out every time everything's not going to fall into place every time there's going to be some times when some things are going to not be where you want them to be at the time you need them to be there and so what what are some habits that you have that you have tried to change what are some habits that um you know you need to change and if if you don't if, you know if you uh, someone said my mindset um poor food choices um uh, randomly okay and those are some good things we you know when we make poor food choices choices you know, um, someone said being sarcastic. That's a ha- got a habit of being sarcastic. Um, but that in, in any of these, you know, our goal, what we end up doing is we try to change our habits by changing our behavior without changing the image of who we are. Um, we have to change who we see ourselves to be and who we are before we can actually change the behavior. We're going to talk about how to do that this morning. And I'm excited about this because I believe, um, you know, scripture will bear this out and scripture will show us and give us some inspiration as to how to do that. You know, so now that we kind of know that in order to change, really to change habits long term, we need to change the image of ourselves. What are some of your thoughts about yourself that you need to re-image in order to become the new person you want to be? You know, um, <laughs> someone called the procrastination the P word. That, that's me big time. It has, has been. And that's my goal this year is to make changes um, that will be sustaining. And I've done some things as far as procrast, you know, to to get rid of procrastination for years, almost at a time and still fall up, you know, fall back into old habits. So um, this year with this message and with what God is revealing to me, I plan to make a difference uh, for the rest of my life, you know. um, So what are some of your thoughts about yourself? Um, You know, um, what that you need to change, that you need to re-image, you know, you need a different image of yourself to become the new person that you want to be. You can't you can't become the new person you want to be if you still see, um, you know, what you were doing and, and your habits are reinforcing what you've always done. And so let's, let's get right into the scripture here because this is a very, very powerful scripture that we'll, we'll see. Paul is talking to the Corinthian church and many of the churches that Paul talked to at this time where he had uh, gone and, and preached and they had become Christians and he's writing letters back to them. Many of them were people from all different backgrounds who had never heard of Jesus before, never heard of Christianity before, never heard of the Jewish religion before. And so he is talking to them about who they are and even the Jews in this particular case, who they are in Christ. It's new. It's something that's brand new. So many of you, you are familiar with this scripture in Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter and the 17th verse. Uh, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. You know, I grew up with the King James version in my mind and in my head. Um, the, um, if anyone is in Christ, what, what that says is if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. And, and I think about that scripture and I thought about, you know, that particular scripture with, um, if old things are passed away and everything's become new, why is it so hard for me to do the new things and the old things seems they're not passing away. It seems like they're still here. Well, let's get into this and kind of share what this, where, where this is going um, with, with Paul. So let's back up a couple of verses and we'll see what Paul is saying in the 14th verse. He said, for Christ's love compels us 
because we're convinced that one person died for all, meaning Jesus. Jesus died for all of us, and therefore we all died. Now, how is this so? This is, this is what's important. Don't miss this, because this, if we can get this, we can change our habits. We can change, our, we can change who we see ourselves being. It says, for Christ's love compels us. First of all, it's the love that Christ has for us that compels us to make changes. Because we're convinced that he died for us, he died for all of us, and therefore we all died with him. If one died for all, then all died. He died in our place for the results of the, the sins against God that we did. This is a spiritual concept, but also a life principle. And that's what I don't want us to miss that we can, that we need to get so we can get a good handle on what love produces. In other words, for Christ's love compels us. The, the love he has for us compels us to respond. So, our habits and the actions that we do should be out of a response for what he has done. And let's look at the next verse where Paul says, and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. This what's key here is Paul said, no longer living for yourself. Uh, no longer live for themselves. He died for all that those who live no longer live for themselves. See, before Christ, everybody lived for themselves, and many of us still do. We live for ourselves. Our entire life is for ourselves uh, or for our family. You know, that's, that's still for yourself. But when he, when he says he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, he's talking about everybody lives for himself. He, we, he wants, we need to flip that particular script where now we live for him who died for us. And, and that's what he's getting ready to talk about in the next verse. He says here, so for so from now on and check this out, he said, so from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Um, you know, in the King James Version, he says, I know no man after the flesh. And really, he's talking about uh, Jesus here. He said, though we once regarded Christ in this way. Once we knew Jesus according to the flesh, once we knew Jesus, and this, these are the people here, some of these people knew who Jesus was before he was crucified, before he uh, was raised from the dead. They knew the man Jesus on earth. So not just a historical Jesus is what he's saying, which is important, but, to you know, he said now we see Jesus as we don't we no longer see Jesus as just a prophet. We no longer see Jesus as just a teacher in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria. He died. That man died. And, and check this out. That Jesus never to be the same Jesus ever again. That Jesus is gone. That old Jesus is gone. The man who walked the sea around the Sea of Galilee, all the things that he's done, all of that is the old Jesus. He's risen from the dead. And that's why he's saying here, so though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do not any longer regard him this way. We don't see him as just the Jesus who walked the sea and, and, and did miracles and all the things that he did. He's saying it's beyond that. It's bigger than that. It's something that can actually expand and be on the inside of you. And that's where he goes into the next verse that we're so familiar with quoting. And that's this. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, since Christ is not the same person he used to be as Jesus, he's saying now if anyone is in Christ, that new creation has come to you, too. The old has gone and the new is here. Just like the old Jesus is gone. The new Jesus is here. The old you is gone. The new Jesus is here. The new you is here. And so not only is Jesus a new creation, but any man is. Any man can be a new creation. You and I can change. This is what makes it possible for us to change. You and I can change who we are. You know, we're now united with Christ. We are now uh, in united in his death and we're united in his resurrection, which pr means that we get to participate in the new creation of who he is. And that's a principle. That's a new principle. But there is a purpose for this. And that he goes on to tell us what the purpose for that. When he says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. We see we now receive the benefits of being restored by Christ. 
um, to what God had originally designed for us. In other words, God had originally had a design for you and for me as to who we should be. Um, that design, you know, was squelched. We didn't get to do it. But now that Jesus is, has a new creation, he's died for us raised from the dead. Now we can become the person that God always designed for us to do. And that's to be, and that's a principle. That's a new principle. That new person that you are to be is already created. So before you accepted Christ, it was already created before you knew anything about Jesus. That new person was created in Christ for you to become. And so now there's something for you to do because J Jesus has done his part. So there's something for us to do in order to live out that purpose. And we have to realize what his purpose was in order for us to live out our purpose. So let's move on to the next verse. You'll see it says, all of this is from God. Paul is saying, all of this changing is from God. The, you know, Jesus being raised from the dead. First of all, the new Jesus is here. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. So he's saying this is part of the purpose. God was reconciling us to him through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, now it's not just Christ. We really are the body of Christ and it's up to us to actually reconcile the world to Jesus, to, to back to God through Jesus. When I say up to us, it's when people see our lives change, when people see the new Jesus in you, it shows them that they can live, a, they can be a new person. It's not impossible. It is like swimming upstream. But when you are born again, then you, you're not just swimming alone. You have someone that's actually carrying you and moving you upstream and, that, upstream, and that's Jesus himself. But look at the finishing of this verse here. He said the purpose for this was that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. This is what God was doing. It was bigger than any of us, bigger than any, you know, just the Jews, bigger than any other religion that just focus on certain people. And that's, that's part of what's wrong with most of other religions. We focus on one group of people and we think that that religion is just for this group of people. Jesus, what Jesus did is for the entire world. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. That's big right there because we all had sin. But he's saying he didn't count anything wrong that we had done against us. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We should be telling the world that God no longer holds their sins against them. And you are a new creation. You just need to find who you are in him. And here's how you can live up to that new image. That's really what God wants us to do. That's our purpose for doing that. And and so I want to share with you where Paul, before he mentions this in the same letter here in Second Corinthians, the third chapter, he talks about being transformed into the image of Christ. And that's that's what he's alluding back to here. So, you know, that's the work that Jesus has done. It says we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, uh, who are being transformed into his image. That's what we're being transformed into is into the image of Christ with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord and who is the spirit. And, and so when Paul is talking about this right here, you know, he, he talks about in, in the King James version that the people of Israel, whenever they, you know, they were actually, when Moses spoke to them about what God was saying, he spoke to them through a veil. And now he's saying that we are unveiled faces. We can all have a face to face, person to person relationship with God and be transformed into the image of Christ ourselves. Now, this is the work that Jesus has done. Now, here comes the work uh, that we must do. And that's what he's saying here in the next when we get into the, the, the next part of this particular verse. It says we're free of it. Th this this is from the Message Bible, that same verse from the Message Bible. This this really helps me to see what Jesus is saying here. It says we're free of it. All of us. Nothing between us and God. In other words, there's no more veil, nothing between us and God. And our face is shining with the brightness of his face. Um, so there's nothing in between us anymore. Nothing in between us. And so we are transfigured much like the Messiah. Our lives gradually, ooh, look at that. See, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like, like him. This is the work that we must do because it happens 
gradually. And we need to figure out how does it gradually happen? Because it doesn't just gradually happen because we read this and now we know we have the knowledge of it. Knowledge does not create the power to be. You need to do something. And so Paul explains, I like the way he explains it to the church at Ephesus. And so I'm going to invite you to go there with me in Ephesians. And you can read right along with us here. You know, I have it here for you. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And this is the New Living Translation where he says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. See, the former way of life it is it is not just talking about what you and I consider to be sin. It's talking about your habits. It, it didn't have to be a sinful habit. Um, you know, uh, you are what you habitually do. That's who you are. The, you, what, the things that you did yesterday made you who you are today. And whatever you're practicing today, that's who you're going to be tomorrow. You can't be something different tomorrow than what you are practicing today. So whatever habits you have today, that's who you're going to be tomorrow. So we have to change. If we want to change who we're going to be tomorrow, we have to change our habits, change the behavior that we're doing. But that change in that behavior has to be based on something. So change your habits and you become new, not just inside, but also outside. So the inside of you the, the impetus and the inspiration on the inside has already happened. Jesus has already done the work. And now you take that energy, that same energy, and here's how we do it from the outside, from, to change the outside. First of all, throw off the old sinful nature. Sinful nature. He said, and then the next verse says, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Ooh, that's big right there. So you got to let the spirit of God uh, which, you know, inspires the word of God, but allow the spirit of God to renew your thoughts, the very thoughts that you have, the thought. And the first thoughts is talking about is not about what you're doing, but who you are, who you see yourself to be, your attitudes, who you see yourself to be. Let the spirit renew your thoughts about yourself. Let the spirit renew your attitudes about yourself. Put on your new nature. You got a new nature. Put it on. You, you've been born again, put that on. You've been created, to, as he said here, created to be like God. You've been created to be like him, truly righteous and holy. So since we are what we habitually do, then we have to create habits that support this new, our new thoughts. We have to create habits that support our new attitudes. We have to create habits that, for example, Paul goes on here and give some examples. I, I, I didn't list them here, but if you keep reading in the Ephesians, the 25th verse, you know, he, he, he's, he supports what we're saying right here. Change your habits and you'll become the new, not just inside, but also outside. In other words, he says, stop lying and tell the truth. Don't lie one to another. And so he starts listing some of the things that they have been doing. Uh, don't be angry. This is the verse where he talks about don't let the sun go down on your wrath, uh, but control your anger. And then he, one of the verses in there said, those who still let him that st stole steal no more, but let him work with his own hands so he can give. So all of this is where you're changing who you are. He's laying some some actual behaviors out that you need to change. So stop lying. Tell the truth. Stop being angry and, and mad for days with people. Stop stealing and working so that you can have money to give. And don't use, he says, don't use abusive language, um, you know, but use language that's good and helpful. Abusive language is not just you cussing somebody out and you're giving them a piece of your mind. Abusive language is, you know, where language that doesn't, where you actually break down and tear down the person with the words that you say in front of other people, where you're using words to actually you know, uh, describe a person. And he's saying, don't do that, but use words that are good. Use words that are helpful. Use words that are encouraging. And so this, this is the scripture that gives us the foundation and the basis for making changes by creating brand new habits. So here, I want you to tune in real right here. Here's the application for this. So here's our challenge and what I see that we need to do. And um, and just before I get in it, I, I did catch something out of the corner of my eye. I think it's Julie said that she's reading a book called Atomic Habits. That is an awesome book. If you can get your hands on that book, that will help you. Um, 
that that book, I, uh, that's the book that I, one of the books I read in preparation for this, because our habits are who we are. Our habits is what we do and what we do based on, you know, makes us who we are based on who we see ourselves being. So here's our challenge. Your challenge is to make a habit of planning and practicing daily steps that move you in the direction of the person you want to be. In other words, whoever it is that you want to be, you need to create habits that support that image that you see. Create habits, and even if you have to write them down, and I'll give you some steps here to do that. Because the key to sustainable habits um, in self-improving your lifestyle is actually implementing a change that makes you better by practicing it every single day, because that's what you will, that's what you will maintain something that you will practice. And it's just like, um, you know, kind of like riding a bike or it, you know, if you play an instrument, you, you practice, um, you know, I have, I used to play an instrument. Uh, God bless my son, Johannes. He's very good at, you know, you know, in all of that. Um, but, there are times when I can sit down and I can, there's some things I can still play and it's been years since I played. And so the key though is creating the habits. Once the habit is there and many of you, you've done this, you, you, you know, you rode a bike once when you were younger and then you got on the bike again, it'll come back. You may have to take a few strokes. You might have to fall a couple of times, but it'll all come back to you. So your ultimate challenge then is to improve your daily habits over time. And that's what you want to do. You know, um, it, someone said they didn't catch the name of that book. It's Atomic Habits, um, and it should be in, in one of your streams. I don't know which stream you are. I know it's it's on. Um, Jolie put it in the stream on our on our website, and I don't know which uh, Facebook stream she's on. I see it in both places. But you might be on a different Facebook um, stream than she's on, page than she's on. But Atomic Habits. The uh, author's name is James Clear. James Clear. Um, and I'll start giving you some of the, you know, the books that I read because they're, they're so powerful, some of them. And I definitely wanted to share that one. I meant to share that anyway. Thanks, Julie. But your ultimate challenge is to improve your daily habits over time. And you do that by practicing your new image, not just practicing new behavior. You practice your new image of who you want to become. You are a new person, you know, so you need to ask the kind of question like, what would this new person do? Um, you know, what would my new self do? You know how we used to say when we, um, people used to wear that bracelet, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Well, uh, here's a, a new bracelet for you. WWMNSD. What would my new self do? That's the question you need to ask yourself. What would my new self do? If if I, to be who I want to be, who I'm saying, what behavior would I start practicing? What would my new self do? WWMNSD. What would my new self do? So here's some steps to help you to do that. These are steps to help you change your habits by focusing on who you want to be and not the fruit that you want to produce. Um, you know, the fruit that you want to produce, um, we typically focus on the fruit that we want to produce instead of focusing on who we want to be. You, you know, you, you've got to focus on the process. Um, it's, it's, it's good to focus on, you know, who you want to be. You start there. But then, for example, when you start focusing on who you want to be, that gives you the energy to get started. But now when you start to do that, you're taking your eyes off of that image and you're looking at what you need to do every single day. And that's the habits that you need to form. And so you need to lay out some habits, you know, to, that will sustain who you want to be. You got to do something that's repeatable, you know, um, you know, you, i uh, for me, for example, I'm not an expert at, at what I'm telling you. I'm doing this right along with you. I'm in this with you. I'm practicing every single day of the things that I know that I need to change that will make me a uniquely better person. Um, you know, um, I, I want to be 
a better dad, for example. I and, I and that's just an example. You need to you need to write something down for basically every area of your life that you want to make a difference in. Change your habits by focusing on who you want to be, you know, as a as a father, who you want to be, whatever else, whatever other arenas that you participate in. If you're a spouse, then um, you know, that's another area that you want to be uniquely better in. But here's how you do that. The first the first thing we do is we you know, when we create habits, we either create habits from what I call a fruit based. In other words, this is what I want to become. This is this is what I want to do. This is the change I want to make. Um, And so that's fruit based habits. Another one is and we'll get, you know, get to it where you change your image. But the fruit based habits don't start by changing your habits based on what you want to achieve. You know, focusing on the fruit. Remember a couple of weeks ago when we talked about where Jesus said, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, you don't get, you know, good fruit from a bad tree um, and you don't get, you know, different figs from a thorn tree and that kind of stuff. In other words, there's a different different kind of trees don't produce different kind of fruit and neither do good fruit. Good trees produce bad fruit. Neither do bad trees produce good fruit. So don't start by changing your habits based on what you want to achieve. Focusing on the fruit you want to produce. It's an important piece, but you'll, you'll burn out before achieving the goal. That's what happens. If you just keep focusing, I want to lose 30 pounds. I want to lose 30 pounds. And you're just focusing on the pounds. You'll burn out before you lose 30 pounds. So you have to focus, you know, you, you had, you know, it takes a long time to make that change. Just like last week when we shared, you know, with the, the, um, if you make 1% changes over a period of time, it takes a long time, but the compounding effect of that starts to take place. And that's when you start to see the difference. So don't change your habits based on what you want to achieve. You do have to change your habits, but don't chase them. Don't change them (laughs) based on what you want to achieve. Here's some steps to do what you need to do. Write down one habit that you'd like to change about yourself. Whatever that habit is, you know, and notice I didn't say write down what you want to achieve. I said write down the habit you want to change, because if you want to change, if you really want to change, change what you want to achieve and you then you can't just focus on what you want to achieve to get that. As I said, for example, if you wanted to lose 30 pounds, if you wanted to stop smoking. Now, your challenge is to think about the habitual actions of and behaviors of a person who does not smoke or a person who's not overweight by 30 pounds. What do those kind of people do? It's the habitual habits that the behaviors that reinforce the behavior that you want to change. You know, um, as I said, one of my worst habits is procrastination. And I am the image that I have that reinforces that is when I tell myself there's not enough time in the day. How many of you have ever said that there's not enough time in the day when we say there's not enough time in the day, then that's an image we're giving ourselves that I can't do this. There's not enough time. Well, you never will succeed if this is the image that you're giving yourself. And that's one of the things that I realized that I was saying to myself is there's not enough time in the day, but you need to create the practice of writing down the things that I need to do to be the person that I want to be in some key areas every day, just 1% at a time reflecting, you know, at the end of the day on that, you write something down that you want to change. And at the end of the day, you, you make sure that you did something to change 1% better in that particular thing that you wanted to, uh, that you want to change in. So write down the habit that you would like to change. And instead of focusing on, the opposite behavior of that habit, then focus on the type of person that you need to be to exhibit that kind of behavior. Uh, Otherwise you're just hoping that your behavior will change and you're just waiting. And it's, you know, while maintaining the same image and the same beliefs that you had about who you were using that same example that I I mentioned before, let's say I, cause I want to be a uniquely better dad. 
I want to do something every day that moves the needle, um, you know, 1% to the positive of me being a uniquely better dad. And and so the next step will, will you know, kind of help us to do that. If I want to be a uniquely better dad, I got to do some things where, you know, where I change the things that I'm looking at. For example, image-based habits, that's the other, that's what we want to get to, is image-based habits. Start implementing new behavior changes by focusing on new beliefs about yourself that drive the new behavior. You know, for example, my old belief, when I was talking about that being a better dad, I was saying, I don't have the time in the day to focus on this. I don't have the time to do this, you know, um, and if I don't have the time, that's my old belief. Well, I have to come up with a new belief. In other words, I'll make the time every day to be a uniquely better dad, uniquely to each person, to each one of my children, uh, because they are unique. And and I will find a way to do that. Remember last week when we talked about the priests and the Levite and the Good Samaritan? Um, you know, the priest didn't have time. He moved to the other side and kept going. The Levite didn't have time. He moved to the other side and kept going. The Good Samaritan didn't have time either, but he took time. The, the, the Good Samaritan made time. He made time to do what he needed to do to help a man and still ended up doing what he needed to do. So you have to create habits and you'll find a way to do what you still need to do. But you have to create habits and behavior that is uh, consistent with the person in the new image. For example, your behavior, if your behavior is inconsistent with who you see in the mirror, that behavior is not going to last. You know, um, you know, I, what I used to do is, you know, when it comes to my kids, I would I would say, OK, I'm going to call Trey Monday. I'm going to call talk to Johannes, you know, on Tuesday, Darren on Saturday, Nene on Friday. Um, then while well, all along, I really haven't changed the belief that I really don't have time for this. So you see how I need to get rid of the image of who I am in order to change my behavior to support who I want to be. That's the example of what I'm saying. So when your behavior is inconsistent with what you want and who you see in the mirror, you got to change who you see in the mirror. You know, you got to change who who you see um, yourself to be. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, some of us, you need to watch Michael Jackson's original official video from the man in the mirror. It, you know, some of you, maybe you used to dance to it and you used to sound good. You need to read some of those words. He said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror to change his ways. You won't change your ways if you don't change the image of who you see. And you if you look at who you see, the new image that you see in the mirror, if you create habits and behavior that will, you know, that will support that new image, then that's who you become. And so let's take some some action steps to become the kind of person that we want to be. Take some reflection time and write down the kind of person that you, that who would practice this kind of behavior, you know, start by taking some time to define what kind of person that is. Think of people. And if you don't quite know, then think of some people that, you know, um, who's done what you want to do or who's doing what you want to do or who's in that area. And they seem to be successful at it. Think of some people like that that you know and consider them, you know, being a mentor. You can have a mentor and they don't even know they're mentoring you uh, in, in certain areas. But then all you really need to do is duplicate their behavior. Um, I can remember when I was a kid and I, I never knew then that that would affect me all the way up until now. But when I was a kid, uh, all the way from when I was about eight years old, I can remember this. I can remember my dad watching Jack LaLanne on TV. Um, and Jack LaLanne is probably one of the oldest. I believe Arnold Schwarzenegger said he's the apostle of physical fitness. <laughs> and But how many of you remember Jack LaLanne? How many of you have ever heard of Jack LaLanne? He lived, I think, until he was like 96 years old. But he was one of the original physical fitness people who started gyms before they had gyms, who did all these things because of his own behavior, where he was changing 
his own behavior, his and and where, you know, because of some health issues that he had seen and he had known. And but pick anybody that in the area that, you know, pick a brand new person. I just mentioned him because he's one of the oldest. ones. I can remember seeing my dad, you know, with his hand on a chair doing what Jack LaLanne had done and my dad doing jumping jacks. Now, my dad had been in the Army, so he had been exposed to physical fitness. uh, But. Uh, but when I used to see how he used to get in front of that TV with a chair and do whatever Jack LaLanne was doing, and I realized that Jack LaLanne was saying, you don't have to have all this equipment. You can have stuff at home that you can use. And so now I'm using st- stuff. I do have some things at <laughs> a gym at home, but I'm using things at home, especially now when you can't go out and you was well, not safe always to, to be in, you know, in the environment of, of other people. Uh, that may or we don't know who's infected and who's not infected. And I can't afford to be infected. So I try my best not to be infected. Uh, it's not that, it'll, you know, it's going to kill me. And But you don't know how severe it will be with whomever actually gets infected. So but just take some time, some reflection time and write down the kind of person that you like to practice that kind of behavior and then write down some changes that you need to make to become that kind of person. This is your new image. Write down some changes that you need to make to become this kind of person. And then what you do, once you write that down, you start practicing it. That's the third thing. And that's, that's, this is the habitual part right here. You start practicing daily becoming your new self by focusing on behaviors that support your new image. And so you see the new image of what you want to be. You've written down what it takes to do that. Now you start practicing that. You don't you don't do that, you know, based on what you want to achieve. In other words, you, you don't focus on the 20 pounds you want to lose. You focus on the kind of person who is already 20 pounds lighter and what kind of person that is. What did they have to do to be that light or maintain to be that weight? What did they have to do? Uh, for me, you know, whether it's, it's I'm not focusing on just calling the kids, uh, but you're becoming the new creature you designed to be. You're becoming the new unique dad by the new unique things that you will do. And so that's what I'm working on. That's what I implore you to start working on to change some of your habits. So the new habit that you form and this is key right here, the new habits that you form will reinforce your new beliefs about yourself and help you stick to the new behavior. That's the difference right there. The new habits that you form, they will reinforce your new beliefs. So if you, that's why you got to change your belief or your habits that you have is supporting your old belief. And you, you, if you try something, you're going to go back to whatever your old habits was actually reinforcing, which was your old belief. Uh, Like my old belief was, I don't have time to do this. Well, I had to change that belief. There's a way to do this. And now I can ha- create new habits that will reinforce um, my new image and my new beliefs because it's becoming a part of the new thing, the new person that I am. This is why Paul said, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And you do that one day at a time, one day at a time. You become the new image uh, that you designed, that God designed you to be. It's possible because he's already done the work. And now what you need to do is to align your behavior with the new image and which supports and reinforce that new image. Your habits now has to reinforce that. So God bless you. I want to pray for some people right now because I believe that you want to do this. Um, you know, I believe that you see how important it is. Many of you, your, your, your health depends on it. Your life depends on it. Um, many of you need to change habits in the area of your finances, whatever area you need to change habits in, because, you know, your habits is what's got you there. Uh, even if you, even if you're a millionaire, if you have a habit of spending more than you're earning, you're going to end up broke. That's and your habits is doing that. You know, it's so You have to create new habits to become who you want to be and allow those habits to reinforce that new image. So uh, bow your heads and then I'm going to come back 
and 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 invite you uh, to take a step towards you know in becoming a Jesus follower, and also give you some instructions if you'd like to support the work that we do. So bow your heads, please, um, and pray with me, Father. We thank you today for this message. We thank you for what you're doing on the inside of us, what you've already done on the inside of us. And we thank you for the work that we need to do ourselves to become the kind of person that you designed us to be. And so I pray for every man, every woman that's listening and hearing this today, uh, um, every single person who have desires to be whatever they whatever they have in their hearts to be that you've created them to be father i pray that they will focus on that image and create new behaviors based on that image and practice those behaviors give them the courage to take many 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 steps little steps that will support the the image that they see and one day at a time become the new person that you designed them to be. In Jesus' name, amen.